Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Juanita. Well, today is a day to talk about the chicken coop and the chickens. I'm going to share the type of chickens we have. I'm going to uh, first off clean the runner and clean inside their home and get it nice and clean for them. And then uh, I'm going to give you guys a tour of that. I will then at that point talk about the chickens we have uh, probably a little bit about the chickens we used to have and then I'm gonna share about the whole build and um, go from there so for now I'm gonna get busy I got lots of work ahead of me so uh, follow me It's going to be a little tight in here. What it, my attempt today is to uh, clean up this uh, runner and uh, you may not be able to see everything because you're probably only positioned to see from this part over, but that's okay. Um, you'll get the gist of what I'm doing and uh, basically I'm just going to be breaking this up as much as possible and it's going to be messy but uh i want the chickens to have a nice well it's not being too bad but then i'm going to rake it as much as possible out with uh, probably this little rake because a, a big rake ain't going to work when we initially made the runner as well as the whole chicken coop uh we dug down about two feet down and we added the wire mesh uh, on the sides all the way around. And the purpose for that was so that rodents didn't get in. Unfortunately, rodents found a way in. Was that we couldn't figure out because, you know, there wasn't any holes. There wasn't any even, there wasn't, we couldn't even see holes inside the chicken coop as to how they were getting in. But they were getting in. And so my husband had to dig down cover the whole floor with this wire mesh and uh, and that has kept all the rodents out uh, initially they were pretty pissed off that uh, we did that and you could literally I mean it was like a horror movie you could literally like hear them uh, gnawing on this mesh and and chewing and trying to chew it I just noticed there's a I'm gonna have to Tight, little ties there. I mean, rodents don't usually get squeezed in there, but uh, never know. I'm gonna have to tie those in though. Just noticed that. I don't know. It's been probably a long time since it's been like that, so we haven't had any issues of rodents since uh, since we put the flooring. Uh, we put the same kind of wire mesh down on the floor, and it's kept all the rodents out. And the chickens are happy, we're happy, and um, so yeah, so now it's just a matter of cleaning it. So I'm going to get busy, I'm going to get doing that, and uh, hope you enjoy the video. I will put music on so that you uh, don't have to just see me work. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put a mask on because this is going to be dirty. I look like I'm going in for an operation here, which I kind of am. <laughs> it's called a chicken coop. So, here we go. Oh yeah, see the wire mesh is just right here. And we really need to dig down further because that's pretty surfaced. But I'll leave that for another day. For now, I just want to break down this dirt.
going to uh, bring in some sand and uh, new dirt. But in the meantime, I'm going to shovel this dirt out. So I'm going to put you on a quick music break. Okay, so now that the runner is nice and, and clean, I'm gonna add the same dirt that I did on my plants, but uh, it's a mixture of sand and uh, just uh, good flying dirt. And uh, you know, it's got probably a mix of compost in it too. So I'm gonna add a little bit more sand. So I'm gonna go get my sand as well. Oops. That was my back. It's a little crowded in here. So periodically I get questions about where I got my rock. Most of the time I go to this place here in Oregon and it's called, and I don't know if you guys can see it, and I am not sponsored by them. I'll just tell you that right now. I don't even know if I can pick this up. This is sand. Ugh. But I get it at this uh, Oregon uh, decorative rock place here in Portland and it's not too far from where we live so uh, that's where I get my stuff now I'm not gonna put a ton of sand um, but I do want to get sand in here because it'll uh, help the ground be a little bit more porous and hopefully won't clump up like it has been Let's see if I can open it and bring a knife or anything. But there is a string here that you unloosen and it's supposed to just unravel. The girls are watching me from the side here. <laughs> like, what are you doing in my runner? I'm making it nice and pretty for you guys. Have to either try to rip it or I gotta go get a knife. <laughs> Even she says I need a knife. Gotta be careful. I went in, uh, when I was doing the pergola, I did something similar to that, only I was facing the, the knife towards me downward and uh, sliced my thumb. It just happened to be the same day that I was opening on the pergola. So, here we go. Put that way over there 
I'll put this in my pocket because I don't want the chickens thinking it's some warm. Okay, so I'm gonna lay, uh, put one layer of, of, a small layer of sand, and then I'm gonna top it with dirt. I'm not gonna put a, a lot, just enough. I'm adding sand here. I'll uh, share a tip. This was a, a tip that I learned I was, uh, when I first started landscaping, is that if you lay just maybe a quarter inch or maybe a half inch of uh, sand on your whole entire lawn, hopefully you don't have a big yard, the next year, It'll, your lawn will be a lot softer to step on. When I uh, was landscaping for the first time and learning a lot, I went to a landscaper nearby, gave me that tidbit. So I've tried it and it does work. help this dirt get a little more porous a little bit. Don't be so tough on the chickens. And this has a little bit of sticks and stuff in it. So uh, it's just really all around good dirt for them to uh, dig around, kick around. There's some nutrients there for them. Give them a nice pile of dirt. They can dig around. Lay around then. So now I'll bring you around to the other side of the chicken coop. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see me in this tiny little area, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, basically, I'm just going to rake the inside and uh, maybe throw in a little bit of dirt. Uh, otherwise, it's good to go. I'm gonna lay a big, nice big piece of flagstone over here so I can put their water on top. And I'm gonna add some of these stones on top of it. So now I'm gonna give them some good, fresh, clean water. So as you can see, um the whole building right here now the building runs from this from this side over here all the way to the other side of this lilac tree just beyond it and then of course you have the runner that runs all the way down 
little past the St. John's Wharf. And uh, I built this little platform here just to give them a little bit of uh, a little entryway. I put rocks in between it, but it it gets really tough because of the way that they, the chickens kick all the dirt out and, you know, cleaning the chicken coop gets it dirty. It'd just be much easier just to go ahead and wash it if it was just all cemented. So I'll do that next spring. But for now, we keep a fan out for them uh, in the summer when it gets really, really hot. And we run that so it kind of keeps them cool. The the tree, the lilac tree, as well as all the, the St. John's Ward and the Japanese maple tree, they all kind of pretty much keep it nice and breezy in there too and shade it for them when it gets really hot. And so as we walk in, there's freckles. Then of course you saw me cleaning this whole area here. And this is their step ladder that goes into their coop. We do have a door that we can easily shut and lock up if we need to. Now, typically we don't do that. The only time we actually close that is when they're brooding. Um, and the reason why we close it when they're brooding is because we don't want them brooding necessarily. Um, sometimes we'll allow it, but uh, because, you know, they think they're <laughs> laying an egg and they, some chickens will go into a brooding cycle. Now I have not seen these ladies brood uh, we did have a cochin. Now she brooded all the time. And I don't know if that's typical for cochins, but uh, chickens, but uh, that these ones have not brooded any at all. Um, and then of course, it is where we uh, take this door, this panel off and uh, to clean out their coop. So right here to um, the right of me over here, is where we have their pellets. It's called a, a layers grain. And so it helps with their um, laying of the eggs. It helps them with that. It gives them all the nutrients and stuff that they need. And we also uh, add calcium to the feed as well. But we also give them a little bowl over here uh, filled with calcium. And so I'll bring you up and close. And so th this is just crushed oyster shells and it's uh, calcium tablets. And they love it. They pick on it all the time. Uh, and then of course the water, we have a, uh, a container that actually heats up and keep the water nice and warm in the winter. So it doesn't freeze. And it does get pretty cold, so it, it can freeze. So we uh, uh, don't want them to have frozen water. Uh, Got to keep them with just some really good water. Now, these two ladies here, uh, they are called uh, Black Rock, is what they're called. They And then, of course, Freckles is a California Gray from uh, all the descriptions that I have uh, researched. Now these chickens were given to us. Uh, we had another set of chickens and they have now passed on. And uh, when we had the last, we had a cochin who survived the longest and we didn't want her to be alone. So we ended up getting freckles that was given to us. And then later on, uh, the other two ladies came about uh, right along shortly thereafter. And they've been really, really wonderful. Now these uh, are really, uh, the Black Rock is a very interesting um, history here because I believe it's the Bard Rock, Plymouth Rock rooster is crossbred with a Rhode Island red chicken and that's how the Black Rock become who they are. They were first originally uh, crossbred like that. They were trademarked in the UK. So 
anybody who now crossbreeds the two, uh, the Rhode Island Red with a Bard Rock, Plymouth Rock, uh, to get a Black Rock, they cannot sell them as a Black Rock because that trademark has been already uh, taken up. So yeah, as you can see, they, they eat pretty good. This must be the dinner time. Let's see. And then of course, you know, you see their step that goes up into the coop. And uh, we, when we had our coach, uh, coach and chicken, um, she brooded a lot. And so sometimes we'd have to kick her out and close the door so that she kind of grew out of that habit of brooding. Cause she could sit there and brood for, oh, a month easily. And since we don't have a rooster, uh, the city does not allow roosters. So um, we can only have chickens and we can have up to four chickens, but some people do uh, have more than four. Let's see. And then, of course, this is the area that they live in primarily in the winter when it's really raining and it's cold. They kind of stay here. And then, of course, the runner here, um, as you can see, it's pretty light in there and it's really well sheltered because to the right over here by the fence is my star jasmine. And so that kind of helps the shelter there. And then way in the very back of you can see a limb down that's the japanese maple tree and then of course over here there's a shrub right over here which is my saint john's wart and uh and then over here i have my uh lilac tree and all this uh trees and bushes they add not only a nice shelter uh from the elements in the winter but it also gives them a nice cross breeze for them when it's really hot out. For a long time, uh, this whole runner was just basically out in the open uh, and it would get really hot. Uh, so I just restructured everything and it gives them a nice little uh, area to go and stay cool. So I think that's about, about the rest of it and then of course you can see the top of the runner and we have a large birdhouse actually the guy who built this is the same guy who built that okay well it's a little tight in here but i wanted to kind of go over uh how we keep them warm in the uh winter so basically as you probably are familiar we actually use the warming lights for the winter so that they can stay nice and warm in the winter. Now, the, the way we positioned this uh, chicken coop, it is against the fence. So let me bring you out this direction. So as you can see, there's a fence on the other side of this and uh, it's a cyclone fence and we uh, cover it up with it's just a, a eight by 10 sheet of bamboo screening. And we put that across there. There's not a lot of space in between. And so there's not a lot of crosswind in the winter. This keeps it really, really sheltered. But we do have a lot of ventilation uh, because when you have a chicken coop, you really do want ventilation for them to breathe because, you know, they're pooping and, you know, chicken manure is really hot. So, um, and then they've got feathers, so you want to keep keep it nice and ventilated for them. So that's the reason for all the screening around in here. Now, when they go into their coop in here, then uh, you know they're they're nice and toasty in there, and uh, and that's a good thing because it keeps them really nice and sheltered. But we still have the same type of ventilation as you see. There's ventilation all across here, but we do have a fence that goes right in the in this side of uh, the yard. So that also adds a lot of protection from the elements in the winter. But we still have a lot of ventilation repeated on the other side. Okay, so now I've got my husband out here. Uh, he's gonna open up the coop and he's gonna kind of go over uh, what he does and what, how he cares for that and uh, maybe share his stories on the coop. Yeah, so um, when we first started looking at 
getting chickens. We read a lot of books, saw what it really included, how much of a, a um, mess we were getting into or not. And quite frankly, most of the books that we read scared me a bit. As it turns out, they were for people who had five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or more chickens. And so there's a lot more work, a lot more mess. With three, four chickens, it's not that bad of a deal. In fact, I, I spend maybe um, uh, once a week really doing any kind of cleaning and work and making sure they have water. And I check on a daily basis for eggs and, and check and make sure they have the water and they have their food. But usually I just go, yep, they're all set. They're all happy. They look like they're doing well. And besides uh, letting them out and having fun with them, it's it's not a whole lot of maintenance. But uh, yeah. So if you want to open it up, and I'll see if I can uh, maneuver the camera. Uh, maybe the other in the inside, honey, because I'm going well, to talk about. I'm going to talk about that. To part. open it up, I have to take that one. Oh, okay. That one bar okay. out. Well, before you do that, maybe, maybe I need to talk about this part then. Um, before he does that, I uh, just kind of want to touch up on on this part. Uh, when we had the chicken coop built, we did have them put this window up to keep it up for the summer so that the chickens are able to breathe. Well, the, the screen was not here. And so I got an idea to go ahead and create a screen for them so that we could keep them, keep this open and they won't have a tendency to want to come out this direction. But it does also make it a lot easier for my husband to reach in there and unlatch the beginning. So to open this right up, to open this up, what I did is uh, because of raccoon, but they're actually able to uh, push this up. So we have like this lock mechanism on those. But I didn't want them to try to pry this, so I didn't want to get some kind of latch for this. So instead, what I did is I went and uh, drilled some holes in here and here, and then I added some nails in here. So to remove the nail, we have this little magnet and and it just latches up. And right now I have to re-drill the hole a little bit because with condensation and the weather with wood expanding and contracting, it tends to also make the hole a little bit tighter. So I do need to do that, but with the little magnet, we just able to uh, pull up the nail and then we're able to um, open it up. So, so as you can see, the magnet picked up the nail and that keeps it nice and secure. Now I did have another chain, so we could open this up and then uh, with another chain, latch it in there and then we can keep them both open. But it's a good way to get in there, reach for eggs if they, laid eggs in this side and it also helps my husband to unlatch it from the inside so uh, this this not only allows the chickens in and out but it lets me get in here and one of the parts of our design is one of the um, roosts that we have perches is removable and it makes it easier um, we we design the chicken coop to be really easy to clean and step one in that when we designed the coop, we first went and took a look at a lot of other coops, uh, find the best features of all of them and try to put them together. I think one of the, the, the nicest ones was the cleaning uh, part of it all, uh, make that as easy as possible. And so uh, what we did was we created a very easy to remove front hatch so that you don't have to crawl in windows or or reach from the the uh, nesting area from the outside to get in. Instead, we little latches, close the door, and with these two handles, just very easily remove the whole front wall. And then you have easy access to the whole coop. Um, I have right here in the corner, easy to grab a little scoop and we have uh, uh we use um wood shavings as you can see here uh, inexpensive and easy to put down we have a trash can that we keep filled with the fresh bedding that i'll bring in here with me and it's just and i'll take a 
uh, trash can. I actually have a couple of thumbtacks that I'll tack it here so I don't have to hold on to the bag. It's easy to open. And I just scrape the shavings, the old shavings into the bag and lay down new shavings. It takes me maybe 15 minutes to do every once a week. The other thing that uh, makes this really easy, and I, we must have gotten this idea from some of the other coops we saw, or maybe something we read, but this is the, the floor of the uh, nesting area isn't wood. We actually put down on top of the wood some linoleum, and it just stays so clean and is so easy to clean. If, if something sticks to it, it's just a matter of doing this, and you, you got everything off of it easy to keep clean and washed and so forth lay down for some fresh bedding and then lift up the handle and put the wall back in place and we actually have a couple of eggs you want to give them a closer look here let's see uh the inside structure and as you can see it's a pretty simple structure um we have a roosting uh, bar right here for the chickens and actually they actually jump way up there and then we have one large one because they like their own little space and then of course this uh, roosting um, this bar here will set as another roost and a lot of times we typically have it close to the window so that because they like to look out the window and um, we actually have three nesting areas which um, I don't know, what do you think? I mean, I think uh, we did uh, one too many because they don't typically um, nest at the same time. It's very rare, but uh, three is- They, they three switch is, it up too. Yeah, sometimes they do. Sometimes they sit in one, sometimes they, they go to the other side. They, they like a, a change now and then. Exactly, and uh, these particular chickens, we haven't really had them brooding very long, if they brood at all. I've never seen them brood, have you? Um, freckles. Freckles will, will, will go brood? through that, yeah. Yeah, but it's year. pretty uh, short-lived. Yeah. And then, of course, we have two fresh eggs. And uh, they actually are good layers, uh, not only because of the breed that they are, but also because they typically are just really good layers. They, they uh, will lay anywhere from two to four four eggs a day. Uh, well, we get, we get like one a day from each of them. So we wind up with three eggs a day. Okay, okay. And so, yeah, and so it's pretty simple. And again, you know, we have the ventilation all the way up on top across the top there, as well as on the side here because you do want to keep this well ventilated. And then during the summer, we have this window open up for them. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the coop. That's their little nesting area. And that's where they go to roost every night. I'm making sure the door stays open. we're done and we're done thank you hon my pleasure so now that my husband talked about uh the coop and how he cleans it and i gave you a chicken tour of the inside i wanted to touch up on the roof up here uh it's very simple we just got a uh, swimming pool liner it's a really nice thick uh, rubber and uh, we just laid it on top of course it's framed so we were able to attach it to that and then i just put probably a max of two inches of dirt on top of that, filled it up with succulents, and that was it. Um, if you're thinking of doing a live roof, it is an excellent way to not only keep your chicken coop nice and cool for the summer months, but it also adds insulation for the winter months. So it serves multi-purpose, and plus it's beautiful. So if you're thinking of doing that for a shed or uh, a chicken coop, do it because it blooms beautifully. Succulents don't require a lot of uh, dirt to survive. They don't require a lot of watering and they're drought tolerant. So it's a win-win situation. So um, if you have any questions on that, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. 
I'm not going to take you up to the chicken coop because uh, I showed the top of the chicken coop when I did um, my yard tour. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link it up here for you. But uh, yeah, so now I'm going to just show you where the chickens lay their eggs. And then, of course, you see me coming into this little corner all the time where, and this is where we keep not only, let's see, we keep um, the shavings over in the big bin here. And then on this one, we keep the pallets for the chickens on this metal bin. And then um, in this little uh, container, we have all the calcium in there really funny the chickens think that uh, I'm gonna give them their treats because when I come to this corner they think oh she's getting the mealworms so they're all all hovering over here but uh, but right here is where we have we keep a couple of hinges on it and this is the door into uh, into the laying pens and I'll bring you a little bit closer and so here's where they lay their eggs. And like my husband said, they're only, uh, you know, a square foot big as far as the nesting area, but it's big enough to keep them nice and cozy and snug in there and able to lay their eggs. And while I have you here, this is the other um, lock that we have. And this one has a little bit of a locking mechanism. And so you just bring it up and you latch it and then you push it back down. And that keeps, this keeps the chickens nice and safe from any raccoons trying to pry it open. We don't have any more uh, mealworms, we ran out. So every time I go to this corner, they're like running. Uh, but uh, I, they feel a little disappointed. So I'm trying to give them pellets and take them out, but they're not buying it. But anyway, I want to bring my husband and at because uh, we did do a lot of research that we went to a chicken detour, uh, a chicken, what was it called? A, a coop, coop detour. detour. And uh, went around looking at several, several, and some of them were from really fancy to um, very, Boxes very- Boxes to condos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to get his thoughts on uh, what kind of research he did because he actually did all the research. I just helped with the designing of it and putting the live roof and building the screen. But for the most part, he did all the footwork on um, getting the, the builder and, because we didn't build it ourselves. We actually had somebody build it. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I recollect, how many years has it been now? About six, seven years? Uh, my grandson's... Oh, yeah. uh, uh, going to be 14 and he was only five. So there we go. Five, it's been five, quite five, a few years. Five, few years. And I, I remember when we started, I, I knew nothing about chickens. And the, I, maybe I'll repeat or say stuff you've already said, or maybe uh, the obvious. But to me, it wasn't the obvious. I remember the first thing I. What, what, what's with the eggs? I mean, are they all going to hatch? Are we going to wind up with millions of chickens? <laughs> And, and how much do they lay and, and all of those basic questions. And so I learned uh, uh, hens will leg eggs and uh, those are edible eggs, but they won't be fertile unless you have a rooster to fertilize them. Yeah. So that's the first thing. You don't need a rooster in order to uh, have eggs for breakfast. So that was number one that I learned. I didn't which is, know. Which was really interesting because I, I was raised in a farm. So I'm all familiar with livestock and chickens because we had tons of that. Yeah. But he never grew up around that. So it was really interesting to <laughs> see the, what he knew and didn't know. What, what he knew and what he didn't know and what he found out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, so then I found it really difficult to get any information on of what they actually needed in their enclosed uh, hen house in the top part of that, right? Yeah. And so I learned that basically what uh, was needed was two things, a, uh, a, a place to lay the eggs, a little uh, nesting area or two or three. I was told to give them two or three. Um, 
and they needed to be about one by one foot square mm -hmm. and um, a roost, a place for them to uh, jump up on and, uh, perch for the night. and perch for the night. That's yeah. exactly right. That was basically all that was needed up there. Now, yeah. So I'll share that information because I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, the easy cleaning stuff? The easy cleaning, you came up with that. Uh, but we we actually were involved in the designing of it and what it is, and we both talked about what it is that we wanted in a chicken coop from all the chicken coops that we saw uh, and were able to view. We um, we could see pros and cons on on a lot of it, and so we just knew what we wanted to do and what was going to make it easy for us or primarily for him because he, it's his job yeah yeah and uh, part of that was being able to walk into it we stooped mm -hmm. down a little bit but it's still you could walk inside yeah. and get to all of it yeah i mean you're you're uh six six feet so uh yeah so and he can he can pretty much i mean he's a little crunched a little bit, but for the most part, he can stand up on I it. need to get on in the there. high end. Yes. yes, and I've gone on my hands and knees and gone into the runner, and that's yes. the other part of the coop that we uh, decided on. And I know we talked about the runner going all over the yard. I wanted the runner to go a long ways, and um, but it turned out pretty good the way we. Enough that they have enough space. I think yeah. for three chickens, yeah. we've got a pretty luxurious space for yeah. them. They're happy in there. They really, you know, they don't mind going in. It's not like, oh, we have to go in now. Oh, uh, no, they go in themselves. Naturally. naturally. That's the other thing about the chickens, in case you've never had them, that is very cool. And that is, as soon as it gets dark, you leave the door yeah. open. They'll go in on their own. Yeah, they, they go in. They know when. Uh, it's when nighttime. It's they nighttime. like the security. Now... For some reason, when I'm out here, they'll stay up way past their bedtime. Past their bedtime. <laughs> they will not go in because they are, oh, the, the, the honeybird came right. Hummingbird is right there. Wow. Yeah, this time he came right in the underneath pergola. the pergola. Sorry yeah. about that. You got, I get so excited when I see that yeah. hummingbird. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so anyway, I, I think that's going to do it for us. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give us give us a like or give me a like and subscribe don't forget to share it with your friends and family but more importantly you guys get up get out get active get a chicken or two get some fresh eggs on your table and uh, enjoy them because there are pets uh, people have often said do you eat your chickens no we don't eat our pets <laughs> thank you for watching and I hope you really did enjoy it and I love you and I will see you in my next video. Okay, ladies, come on. Come on, lady. Oh my gosh, I feel so terrible that you, you guys don't have some your... Green? Huh? Come on, lady. You wanna give them some green? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have any mealworms. They're on order, so I will have them tomorrow. But I'm going to give them a little melody of uh, salad. Uh, it's just spinach and, you know, just some regular old salad greens. Come on, girls. Come on, lady. Come on. Come on, Apple. Come on. I know it's not, it's not what you want. I know it's not mealworms, but... tonight. Okay, good night girls. I think that that's going to do it. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Mwah! Love you. And thank you for watching.